hello uh, now we conclude uh, the price elasticity of uh, demand and in this same video we are going to talk about uh, the price elasticity of supply so what we'll cover in here mainly is the cross price elasticity of demand the uh, income elasticity of demand and finally the elasticity of supply I am your host Elias so let's uh, quickly look at uh, the cross price elasticity of uh, demand that uh, cross price elasticity of demand measures how sensitive consumer purchases of one product say commodity X are to a change in the price of some other products in this case we can assume commodity Y so if we are only looking at commodity X and commodity Y, that is only two commodities, what we want to do is to look at how responsive the consumers will be to the changes in the price of one commodity. And if we take these two uh, commodities X and Y to be related, then it means we would want to see if the commodities were substitutes, how consumers will behave and if they were complements, how consumers will behave. So recall that price of related goods affect the demand of a product. But the own price does not affect the demand, but instead affects the, uh, affects the uh, uh, quantity demanded. So what we should note, therefore, is that uh, to determine how large the effect is, we would have to look at the elasticity of demand. If a product has close, uh, a lot of substitutes, it means that that product will be highly elastic. Therefore, we will also look at the, complements, uh, the complement goods and look at the effect it will have on the uh, demand. So let's uh, now make it official that we consider only two commodities, X and Y. Then the cross price elasticity of demand will be calculated as uh, the ratio of the percentage change in quantity demanded of commodity X to the percentage change uh, in the price of commodity Y. Now, we are looking at commodity X in relation to commodity Y. If the price of commodity Y changes, how will consumers behave to, uh, the, uh, to commodity X? Are they going to buy more or less depending on whether price has increased or decreased? Well, so in uh, checking this, recall when we just introduced elasticity, we defined the change percentage change in uh, uh, in commodity X and then the percentage change in the price. And the same can be brought here that therefore we'll look at the change in QX divided by uh, change in PY multiplied by PY over QX. Or simply put, if you are looking at an equation, then you will have to get the derivative, which happens to be the slope of uh, the given demand function with respect to uh, commodity Y, and then you multiply by the ratio of the price of commodity Y to the quantity of commodity X demanded. With this uh, bit of an introduction, therefore, we will note that if the cross price elasticity of a demand is positive, then we will conclude that X and Y are substitutes. This is because when the price of one good goes up, the demand for the other good will also go up. This means that there is a, uh, a direct relationship between the price of one good and the quantity demanded of the other good if the two commodities in question are substitutes. We note also that therefore the larger the positive cross elasticity uh, coefficient, the greater the substitutability between the two products. It means that if uh, the uh, elasticity grows higher and higher, it becomes easier 
for the consumer to substitute one good for the other. In other words, it means that there are a lot of substitutes on the market giving the consumer uh, choices to make among alternatives. If the cross price elasticity of demand on the other hand is negative, then it will mean that X and Y are complement goods. And from there, the larger the negative cross elasticity coefficient, the greater will be the complementarity between good X and good Y. If uh, the negative value is smaller, then it means that the complementarity is also small. Remember that uh, complement goods are goods that go hand in hand. For example, you can have a car and fuel, or bread and butter. A zero cross price elasticity, however, suggests that the two products being con uh, considered are independent. So, when we were looking at on price elasticity of demand, we distinguished between the values, uh, the coefficient greater than one and less than one. And then one became the boundary and we called that a uh, unit elastic. Under cross price elasticity of demand, the landmark is a zero uh, elasticity coefficient. And if you obtain a zero elasticity coefficient, it will mean that the two commodities are independent. If it is negative, then the commodities are complements. If it is positive, on the other hand, it will mean that the two commodities are substitutes. Let's take an example. Consider the demand function where quantity demanded of commodity X is a function of the price of commodity X and the price of commodity Y. Specifically, we have QX equal 50 minus 2P minus 4PY. Suppose that price of good X is 5 while price of good Y is 2.5, then required is for you to find the on price elasticity of demand and the cross price elasticity of demand. The last question is, are X and Y substitutes or complements? X. Now, in uh, finding the solution to this, remember, we first start with our demand function that we have uh, QX. Okay, let's just uh, revisit our demand function. And then we are told that the price of good X is 5 and the price of good Y is 2.5 at a given level. It means that the first thing we need to look at if we want to find the on price elasticity of demand is to know what quantity we will have given that we know what price of good X is and the price of good Y. Therefore, it means that we need to know the quantity demanded of good X at the given price levels. Sorry, so we have that. And then we have 50 minus 2. Now, Px is given to be 5. And the Py is given to be 2.5. With this, we note, therefore, that uh, this part, if we simplify, we'll have 50 minus 10 uh, minus, now, 4, 2.5 times 4 is also 10. So, this gives us 30. Meaning that uh, Qx is 30. Now, if we are to find the own price elasticity of demand, we need to find dqx, dqx, because it's a function, divided by dpx, 
on price so we are looking at the on price the price of commodity x then we multiply this by uh, px which is the price of commodity x uh, divided by qx and if we simplify this we will have uh, dqx divided by dpx is a slope of the demand function with respect to the price of commodity x and in this case we see that the slope is uh, uh, it will be obtained by differentiating with respect to px, which will just be negative 2. So we have dqx dpx to be negative 2, then multiplied by px divided by qx. So px, remember, from the statement, we've been given to be 5, mm -hmm. and qx is what we've computed here to be uh, 30. And if we simplify this, what we will have, therefore, is that we will have negative 10 divided by uh, 30 which will simply give us 0 negative 0 uh, 0.333 and so on and this part therefore shows that the uh, demand on price if you look at on price it means that demand for commodity X is uh, in elastic because you will have to get the absolute value of this and uh, doing that if you get the absolute value what you, ha you have is basically uh, 0 0.3 which tells you that demand is in elastic and uh, from this we see that demand for a product is uh, in elastic but now the second question is uh, uh, the second question wants us to find the cross price elasticity of demand, and that is obtained by uh, differentiating dqx with respect to the price of uh, commodity y, which is uh, uh, a related commodity. So we have dqx divided by dpy. Then we multiply this by py divided by qx and uh, what we do if we go and differentiate this so the qx divided by dpx is the slope of the demand function with respect to the price of commodity y and if we do that we see that we will obtain negative 4 so that is this part here so you differentiate the demand function with respect to the price of commodity y and if we do that, we'll only remain with negative 4 here as the slope, which will be negative 4. And then we we'll multiply by PY, which from the statement we were given to be 2.5. And then uh, QX is what we've computed here to be 30. And if we simplify this, what we'll end up having is uh, negative 10 divided by 30 and this will give us negative 3 0 negative 0 0.333 now here we are not going to get the absolute value because just the landmark is a zero therefore we need to make a decision based on the elasticity whether it is negative or positive now, what we are seeing here is that the elasticity of demand is negative, which means, therefore, that good X and good Y are complement goods. The question was explained, so the explanation here should be kept simple, that since the cross price elasticity of demand is negative, it means that X and Y are complement goods. So income elasticity of demand measures the degree to which consumers respond to a change in their income by buying more or less of a particular good. So if we are to compute this, we see therefore that uh, we will have to get the percentage change in quantity demanded of a given commodity to the percentage change in the income. And since these were already defined, it means we are simply getting change in Q divided by change in I multiplied by I over Q. Or if you are looking at an equation, you need to get the derivative of the demand function, 
with respect to the income and then multiply the income uh, by, I mean, multiply by the ratio of the income to the quantity demanded. If we consider only one commodity, that is commodity X, it means therefore that if the income elasticity of demand for commodity X is positive, then X is said to be a normal good. That is, the higher incomes increase the quantity demanded and the budget share of such goods. And if the income elasticity of demand is negative, then X is an inferior good, which means that the higher incomes reduces the quantity demanded and therefore the budget share of such goods. Remember that when consumers are, are, making, budget, are making the budget, they look at what commodities they need to buy. If the good is inferior, while their income has increased, they will reduce its content or its weight from the budget and therefore the, uh, the quantity demanded of it will reduce. You should note therefore that within the confines of normal and inferior goods, we can also define two other goods which are the luxury goods and the necessities, which we can therefore look at in terms of elasticities. If the income elasticity of demand is greater than one, then the good is said to be a luxury good. So recall, when you are looking at uh, income, uh, the income uh, elasticity in general, the landmark will be zero. If a good has a positive elasticity of demand, it means the good is normal. And if it is negative, it is inferior. If you come to defining whether it's luxury or a necessity, if a good has a uh, 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 an elasticity greater than one, it is a luxury good. And if elasticity is less than one, then it is uh, a necessity. Because higher incomes for a luxury good increases the quantity demanded and therefore the budget share. Whereas for necessities, uh, it is the opposite. It's, it uh, should be noted, therefore, that because the income elasticity of zero implies that uh, the good is inferior and that all uh, commodities with income elasticity of demand less than one are necessities, then it means that all inferior goods are necessities. But normal goods are also necessities depending on the nature of uh, can be necessities depending on the elasticity coefficient. So, normal goods are only necessities if they are not luxury goods. That is, if they have the elasticity coefficient between 0 and 1, then such normal goods are necessities. If it exceeds 1, they are termed as luxury goods. It should also be noted that all luxury goods are normal goods. Let's take an example. Consider the demand function Qx is equal to 50 minus 2p plus 4py minus 4i. Then suppose that price of x is 5 and price of good y is 2.5. The income of consumers is put at 10. Then we are required to find the own price elasticity of demand the cross price elasticity of demand as well as uh, determining whether x and y are substitutes or complements then we need to find the income elasticity of demand and they are determining whether x is a normal good or inferior good and finally determining whether x is a luxury good or a necessity good now because we have already looked at uh, the first three i will start my uh, computation by looking at uh, the fourth uh, fifth and uh, the sixth. So that is we need to find the income elasticity of demand From this uh, We are given Q is equal to that. So which is equal to 50 Minus uh, 2 px is put at 5 Plus 4 py is put at 2.5 Minus 4 Income is put at 10. So if we simplify this, what we'll have therefore is that this Q will be equal to
50 minus 10 plus 10 minus 40. And this will just give us 10. So meaning Q will be 10. And from here, we can get our income elasticity. So DQX uh, over DI multiplied by I over QX. And from here, we see that this part here is the derivative of the demand function with respect to income, which is negative 4, multiplied by uh, income is uh, 10, and the quantity is uh, also 10. So therefore, what we see here is we get a value of negative 4. So the second question is uh, uh, ask, was asking us to determine whether x is a normal good or an inferior good. Now, since the income elasticity coefficient is negative or is uh, less than zero, it means that uh, commodity X is an inferior good. The, second, the other question was asking us to determine whether X is uh, a necessity or a luxury good. Now, since the elasticity coefficient is less than one, because negative 4 is definitely less than 1, it means that commodity X, therefore, is a necessity. Okay, so that is it about uh, uh, elasticity over demand. We can now look at uh, the elasticity over supply. Just like consumers respond to changes in price, suppliers also respond to the changes in price. As such, you need to recall the law of uh, supply that the higher the price, the uh, more the quantity supplied. So the price elasticity of uh, supply, therefore, depends on the flexibility of uh, sellers to change the amount of the good they pr produce due to the changes in the price. As such, we should note, therefore, uh, both the arc and point elasticity formulas, which can also be used if you are determining the elasticity of uh, supply. Price elasticity of supply can be determined as follows, where we get the percentage change in the quantity supplied to the percentage change in the price. So, from where we're coming from, we note that this, therefore, can simply be uh, summarized to this equation here, or to getting the derivative if uh, you are dealing with uh, a function. Okay, so let me make this more formal. So what we have, therefore, is that since this involves the midpoint formula, it can therefore be computed using the change in quantity supplied divided by the sum of the two commodities, and then you divide, I mean, the average of this, uh, the two commodities, and then you divide this by the change in price divided by the average of the prices. Or simply put, change in QS divided by QS1 plus QS2 divided by 2, the all of this over change in P divided by P1 plus P2 divided by 2. So remember, when you are dealing with this, you are using, you are getting the arc uh, elasticity of supply. If price elasticity of supply is greater than 1, then supply is elastic. And if the price elasticity is less than 1, then supply is inelastic. And if it is equal to 1, then it means that supply is unit elastic. If it is equal to 0, then supply is said to be perfectly inelastic. And if it is equal to infinite, supply is said to be perfectly elastic. So what we go through here is the same things that we looked at when we were looking at elasticity of demand. What you are required to do is to draw gr the graph showing perfectly elastic supply and perfectly inelastic supply. I will leave this for you to handle when you, uh, you read through and understand the concept behind here. Let's take an example. Suppose that price increases from 4 to 6 and as a result, quantity supplied increases from 10 to 14. You are required to find the price elasticity of a supply. So the method remains the same with this formula. What you end up having is uh, 0 0.83. I'll leave this for you to solve because we have already looked at uh, the midpoint formula. 
Now, because the elasticity is uh, 0 0.83, because we are getting the absolute value, it means that uh, uh, elasticity is in, el uh, I mean, supply is inelastic. Now, because again, all these will be positives, then even the absolute value of the positive will also be positive. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, please send an email to moao at gmail.com. Bye-bye.